Thou art Peter, which means a stone. Upon this Petra, which is a rock, I will build my church, and the gate of Hades shall not prevail against it. Blessed are thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee. The word revealed, revelation, is used in feminine sense. In the Greek, it is used in feminine sense. In the next verse, thou art Peter. Peter is masculine. Upon this rock, the rock is feminine. Thou art Peter. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The church is feminine. Actually, the church is built upon the revelation of Christ. Hallelujah. The feminine word there, has to, the word revelation or to reveal was used in feminine sense. Corresponding to what the church is or what the rock is. The church was built on the revelation of Christ. And that was the universal church. In Matthew 16, Jesus spoke of the universal church. In Matthew 18, he spoke of the local church. You know, because the church is universal in God, but it is local in practice. There is a universal church, which is the corporate church, the body. But the church is definite or practical in localities. So when I use the word church, I'm not talking about different churches. I'm talking about the church. Hallelujah. The Bible calls it the church of God. First Corinthians 1, verse 1 and 2. The church of God, which is at Corinth. The church of God. The church is composed of the very nature of God. The church of God. And Jesus said, And I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you shall bound on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose, it shall be loosed in heaven. So, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. On the day of Pentecost, the church was born. That is when the church was born, actually. The day of Pentecost was a day for the formation of the body of Christ. A.B. Simpson said, Christ was mystically incarnated again on the day of Pentecost. And the 120 disciples were members of his infantile bodies, body. That was to say, the 120 people formed the body of Christ. They were just few. Then they, be they began to grow. They began to grow. The church was born on the day of Pentecost. And that was around, um, scholars have disputed the date because there was a little change. Between AD 30 and AD 32 is when the day of Pentecost was actually uh, um, um, it's for the date for the day of Pentecost when the church was really born the day of Pentecost and Peter preached and 3,000 men were saved there were about 15 dialect languages present on that day and they all became the one new man in Christ and the act of the apostles by the Holy Ghost now is a record a chronicle of how the church began and we have read it and we know the history and what really happened? Praise God. Now, shortly afterward, in AD 35, Paul the Apostle was converted. Paul was caught as a red handed rebel on the way to Damascus. <laughs> and the Lord struck him down. He was one God was going to use in the New Testament economy, mightily. And Paul converted in AD 35. And, um, but at that time, the gospel was only preached primarily to the Jews. According to Acts 11 verse 19, primarily it was preached to the Jews. Then between AD 36 and 37, the gospel went to the Gentile nations. First, in Acts chapter 10, the gospel went to the house of Cornelius in Caesarea, Palestina. That was when the door to the Gentile world was opened for the gospel. So at the beginning, it was the Jews. Then the Gentiles now came in to receive the gospel. The church was marvelous in those days. It was wonderful in those days. Yet it was infant. God first gave apostles to the church. That's what the Bible said that God has set in the church first apostles. So in the Bible, in the book of Acts, we, you, you cannot find it. You don't see pastors pastoring the churches. There were no pastors there. Or have you ever seen pastors? We all saw elders. <laughs> elders were pastoring the churches. 
God gave apostles first, then there were prophets. But the church was infant and it was now growing. Later on in the years, God raised pastors to shepherd the churches. The church administration in those days was far, far different from what is happening now. It was totally different. Totally different. You will understand. I normally ask people, do you see Baptist church in the Bible? Or Methodist church? Or or you can see Apostolic church? (laughs) Or you can see ICGC? Action. All these are not in the Bible. But I'm not saying they are not of God. The names of the churches we have presently are not in the Bible because the church administration, because there was a deformation. There was a deformation. The church administration has changed. In those days, you will find in the Bible the church at Corinth, the church in Antioch. The church carried the name of the locality. If the church is in Turkey, the church will bear the name of the locality. You know, so in the Bible you find the church in Antioch, the church, but you find the churches in Macedonia, and you find the churches in Judea. <laughs> because the smallest, the smallest unit, the church was locally bound. The Bible would not say the churches in Macedonia because Macedonia was a province, it was big. So there are churches in Macedonia. And Judea is big, so there are churches, it's a district. There are churches in Judea. But the Bible says the church in Jerusalem, the church in Antioch, the church in the church carried the name of the locality. That was how it was in those days. And the standard was so high. The deacons were so anointed in Acts chapter 7. The qualification for deacons. Sagacity, integrity, and spirituality. Men who were full of the Holy Ghost, spirituality. Men who were of honest report, integrity, and full of wisdom, sagacity. And they were made to look upon or to care for tables. That is to say, dining hall officers. So even in those days, the qualification for a dining hall officer was so high. (laughs) Dickens. The word means the the office of a deacon is the office of a servant. It is the service of service. I don't want to spend much time at the beginning. God raised mighty men, strong, able. James the apostle was martyred by Herod in AD 44. He was just slain in AD 44. That's amazing. Then um, in Antioch, Antioch became the model, model church. At the beginning, concentration was in Jerusalem. Concentration, it seemed to be the headquarters. Let me use that word. But later on, it was shifted to Antioch. Antioch became the model church. In Jerusalem, Jerusalem never typified the church as it ought to be. But it was Antioch. In Jerusalem, they were only Jews. But in Antioch, the church that was in Antioch, the Bible mentions some of the people who were there, you know. But the Bible mentions in Acts chapter 13, mentions people like Barnabas, who was a Levite. Mentions people like Simeon, who was called Niger, from the word Negro, was a black man. The word Negro, black man. He was called Niger. The Bible mentions Lucius, who was from Cyrene, which is Libya. So we have Africans in Antioch. The Bible mentions Manin, who had been brought up with Herod, Herod the Tetrarch. Manin was the foster brother of Herod the Tetrarch. And, you know, he was raised in a royal home in Europe. So in Antioch, we had Europeans, we have Africans, we have, um, we have Jews, we have people of different status. It was a model church. So in AD 40, the Antioch church pioneered the move to carry the gospel around the world. So missionaries and the missionary movement actually came out of Antioch. So in AD 47 to 49, Paul received his first missionary journey. He went with Barnabas. In their first missionary journey, 
they went forth from Antioch and hands were laid on them and that was when Paul received his apostolic commission he was an apostle by calling but that was when he received his apostolic commission with Barnabas separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I called them they had been called personally but that day was the day of their commission hands were laid on them and they sent them forth AD 47 to 49 that was when actually the missionary movement the first missionary movement began not long in AD 50 there was a controversy concerning the matter of circumcision some people came in to say that except you become circumcised according to Moses' law you can never be saved in Acts 15 so it was a serious matter so Paul and Barnabas had to go to the elders in Jerusalem and they had to sit down in a council meeting and they had to now go doctrine by doctrine to compare what was right and what was not right <clears throat> hallelujah so you have read acts of the apostles a lot of things happened a lot of things happened then there were persecutions persecutions Paul you know the story when he was put into a ship he was taken to Rome when he appealed to Caesar Paul appealed to Caesar and um, he was arrested in Rome for the space of two years AD 61 to 63 Paul was arrested and when he was in prison he was given a kind of liberty he was in his own house and the Bible said that he received all that came to him and he preached the gospel he preached the gospel he preached the gospel and there was an emperor by name Nero at that time he was a young man a very young man but he was very wicked as an emperor he demanded worship there was a veneration of the empires em 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 emperors and um, they worshipped him so as a young man he killed his dad he killed his tutor he killed all those people who had who were positioned to counsel him so that he wouldn't take counsel from anyone so that he can devise his <laughs> malicious and abominable <laughs> act so in AD 64 Nero actually killed Peter and Paul he killed Peter and Paul you know Paul was beheaded but Peter was crucified Paul was a Roman Paul had dual citizenship and in those days he couldn't crucify a Roman crucifixion on the cross according to Josephus Flavius just Josephus the historian was the most wretched of all the ways of death of dying and it was reserved to criminals of the most lowest status criminals so Paul was a Roman so he couldn't be he couldn't be sentenced or um, placed or hanged on a cross but Peter died because Jesus prophesied how he was going to die you know and you know the story that when they placed Peter on the cross he demanded that they would turn his cross upside down because he said he was not worthy to die the death of his master then Paul was beheaded and he was placed in the catacombs in the underground he was just placed there so Nero set his hand to just destroy the believers in his, in his day he will put believers in the skins of animals different animals you know and he will, he will make sure he wraps believers in the skins of animals and throw them into the wild beast lions and they were eaten some of them were drowned in the seas some of them were put into a pond and it was closed sustains and then in the ordinary day he had a long party he had a party every day and uh, he mounted hundreds of poles 500 poles every day and placed believers on it and tied them with stiff wax and set fire in them and use believers as fire or light for their feast so he was killing the believers every now and then hmm. hallelujah so Paul and Peter the leading apostles were no more but John was alive John was alive John was alive John was alive in AD 66 the believers had insight from the Lord to leave Jerusalem into a place called Pella which is, that place is called Sela 
they had insight from God to leave Jerusalem. So every believer, because they understood prophecies, they read Matthew 24, compared the prophecies in the Gospels concerning the advent of Christ and the destruction of Jerusalem. Hmm. And they had insight, and they all left Jerusalem and went to hide themselves. Then Jerusalem was destroyed. It ceased to be a, a, a city. It was totally destroyed in the year AD 70. 40 years after Christ. And Jerusalem ceased to be a city. It was destroyed. And in, in the destruction of Jerusalem, not one single believer died. Those who died were all unbelievers. <laughs> they were Jews who never accepted Christ. But the destruction of Jerusalem was horrifying. Before the destruction, there was a strange man who walked up and down the city of Jerusalem. And he was just preaching, woe unto Jerusalem. All that he said was woe unto Jerusalem for one year. He didn't laugh. He didn't smile. He just was walking. And he was dressed like John the Baptist. <laughs> he was fierce <laughs> like John the Baptist. And he was raw. And he was walking up and down, woe unto Jerusalem. They caught him and they even killed him. Even in, in his death, his last word was woe unto Jerusalem. <laughs> and in history, there was a, a sword that was pointed in the sky. Over the sky of Jerusalem, towards Jerusalem for one year. So at night, you look up and you see a, a sword hanging towards Jerusalem. It's amazing. And in the evening, it was said that the clouds would form mighty chariots, armies, as though they were approaching Jerusalem in the evenings, and people could see it. And in the, in, in the temple that was in Jerusalem, you know, the eastern gate is locked. According to the prophecy of Ezekiel, the eastern gate of the temple is lo was locked because Ezekiel said the Lord of glory will pass through the eastern gate. So that gate was locked. In fact, 20 men cannot open that gate. But every evening, and you know, the gate was so strong, it, could, it couldn't just be opened. But every evening, the gate would just open by itself, up and down. It would toss <laughs> to and fro, and there were voices coming from the gate. And the voices said, let us depart from hence. Let us depart from hence. But still, it happened. General Titus invaded Jerusalem and destroyed Jerusalem in AD 70. And it's said in history that the blood of the Jews flowed like a river. It flowed like a river. That was the last days. That is why the, some of the ancient fathers have believed that when Peter stood and said on the day of Pentecost, they thought they were drunk with new wine. And he said, this is... We are not drunk with new wine, as is supposed, seeing that it is what the third what hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days. You know what Peter said was not the fulfillment of Joel. It wasn't a fast mile. It was an experience of a similar order. What Peter said, Joel didn't see. <laughs> There were two different things. Peter spoke of <laughs> what happened on the day of Pentecost. They spoke in tongues. They prophesied. But what Joel prophesied was actually the blood and fire and place of smoke. <laughs> the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the notable day of the Lord comes. But Peter said, it shall come to pass in the last days. Joel didn't say, it shall come to pass in the, in the last days. Joel said, it shall come to pass afterward. If you read Joel chapter 2, you will understand the context of the afterward. But if you read Acts chapter 2, you understand that the last days, one secondary interpretation is that the last days spoke about the last days of Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem was about to be destroyed. It ceased to be a city from AD 70. And they were scattered among the nations. And it was revived and they were restored, reborn and regarded in 1948. More than a thousand years. So some believe that it was the last days of Jerusalem. <laughs> Praise God. Now, Jerusalem was destroyed. 
Believers in those days believed that the, the world was coming to an end. So at that time, there were many messages. And tonight, I'll show you, tonight we're going to doctrine because it speaks of recovery. Some of the heresies that came at that time. The heresies that came at that time. And then, John was the last apostle and he was still alive. John the apostle. He was living at Ephesus. He was still alive. AD 70 had come and John was still alive. In AD 75, there were heresies that crept into the church. Heresies that addressed or questioned, sorry, not addressed, questioned the deity and the humanity of Christ. Christology, the, 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 the nature of Christ, who Christ is. All the heresies that John had to address, Gnosticism, people who sought for a higher oriental and Greek philosophical form of knowledge, some people entered into the church and they, 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 they said that salvation is acquired only by a higher mystical form of knowledge. And they combined um, oriental mysticism with Greek philosophy. And they came and they said that even the body of Jesus was not, was not real. It was just an illusory one. It wasn't real. The Gnostics came to the church, and people came, we call them the Docetists, Docetism. 